Hi guys, it's Mark Zickrey, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickrey of Space Command, and I'm wearing my brand, brand new Blade Runner t-shirt, which is I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Pretty cool. It's, uh, of course, Rutger Hauer's great line, and the uh, aluminum foil unicorn. <laughs> so we're talking part three about uh, science fiction movies of the 70s. First, a few corrections. Um, it was 1979 that Star Trek, the next job, uh, Star Trek, the motion picture came out. Um, I, it sounded like I said 69, but I meant, of course, 79. Uh, Clockwork Orange, the extra chapter was in the British edition, but not the American edition in initially, nor in the movie in which Alex grows up and kind of mellows out and is a normal person. Um, beyond that, Excalibur was made after Zardoz by John Borman. Uh, Gregory Peck starred in Maroon, not Rock Hudson. I don't, I don't remember saying Rock Hudson, but someone said that. So if I said Rock Hudson, I meant Gregory Peck. And, um, uh, and of course uh, I said that Alec Guinness was the A-list star in, um, Star Wars, the only A-list star. And someone said, what about Peter Cushing? Now, Peter Cushing actually was not in the same firmament as Alec Guinness at the time, because Peter Cushing was mainly in sort of Hammer films, playing Dr. Frankenstein and so forth. But um, whereas Alec Guinness, of course, had been in Kind Hearts and Cornets and many great, great, great films. Uh, but that said, they're still both very classy British actors. And the, the movie, of course, is enormously better for having both of them in it. Um, so now let's just go down some other um, great movies that I haven't yet gotten to. Um, most notably, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which, which Philip Kaufman directed. Uh, he was also the director of The Right Stuff. And uh, uh, this was not a remake of the original film, but almost like a sequel. And Kevin McCarthy, not the one who's in Congress now, but the original great actor who starred in the 1950s version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, reprised his role in a very fun way in, um, in this movie. It starred Donald Sutherland. It um, has Jeff Goldblum in it and the wonderful Veronica Cartwright, who we're hoping to get for Sweet Haven. Uh, she does a great job. It's a wonderful version. It's very creepy. Leonard Nimoy is in it, playing a very different role from Mr. Spock. And yet, and yet it's dealing with the whole loss of emotions. And uh, so it's riffing off Spock in, in, in terms of, you know, flattened affect and so forth. So very, very fun. Uh, really a great movie, and it really holds up. I saw it recently. Uh, then, also there was Mad Max, but it's not the one you're thinking of. The original um, Mad Max film was uh, starred uh, Mel Gibson, of course, but it's not the one that we that was called The Road Warrior here. It was the one that was made before that, and, uh, and it was um, in Australia, and they actually uh, dubbed uh, Mel Gibson's voice initially to have an American accent. And then, of course, The Road Warrior came out here, which was actually initially called Mad Max 2 back back there. And it was, you know, terrific, of course. So, and, and one thing to mention that I didn't mention last time was that the early part of the 70s, you had very dark films, Taxi Driver, so forth. Um, there, was, there was sort of a, a, a generation of filmmakers along the lines of Scorsese, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, you know, Peter Bogdanovich, they were, they were doing very realistic and dark uh, films. And Jack Nicholson, of course, was one of the great actors of that period, as was De Niro, uh, coming off Godfather, Godfather 2. Uh, but when Spielberg and Lucas came on the scene and they had such blockbusters, Close Encounters, well, Spielberg, of course, had Jaws, then Close Encounters. Lucas, of course, had Star Wars in 77. Now, they had both come off non- uh, non-blockbuster films that were non-science fiction. So, of course, uh, Spielberg started with Sugarland Express. Uh, George Lucas did THX 1138 and American Graffiti. But by the end of the 70s or the middle of the 70s, they started to do these films that would be huge, huge, huge hits. And that, that sort of was an arrow into the next decade. And they es essentially set the, the tone for what cinema would be basically from then on, which is that instead of being the dark, late 1960s, earlier 70s kind of realistic films, they would be big budget, big entertainments, uh, often with fantasy elements, uh, either, uh, you know, less pronounced like Indiana Jones or more pronounced like Star Wars. But um, but this would become sort of the the event films. And uh, and you'd had 
event films of a sort prior to that, like Gone with the Wind in 1939 and so forth. But this would mean that every year from then on, during the summer, they would expect some big movie, at least one or more, to be rolled out. And that then became uh, the Marvel Universe and, and all sorts of things that we've seen since then. Terminator, etc. So, so this was the big change. It was a youthful energy. It was a hopeful energy. It was a sort of popcorn movie energy. It was what modern cinema became uh, over the last few decades. And uh, that was mainly thanks to Spielberg and George Lucas. And they would then also bring certain other directors under their umbrellas, Zemeckis and uh, um, George Miller and uh, Joe Dante and so forth. And so very interesting how cinema took that turn uh, toward the last part of the 70s. Now, there's some other films that we sort of, sort of mention for kind of like, um, uh, for for just uh, honorable mentions kind of thing. Now, one film, now, now also Star Wars, which came out in 77, you know, it had a huge influence on everybody. I mean, obviously Ridley Scott, you know, did Alien off of, you know, the power of Star Wars hitting hitting the world. And uh, and also Disney tried to do their own Star Wars film called The Black Hole, which is a really peculiar movie. It's sort of like if you wanted to do Star Wars, but really didn't get why Star Wars worked. And so it has these robots that are cute, but they've got these big goggly, googly eyes, and it's just embarrassing. But it and it has Maximilian Shell. It's got a good cast. The main thing that's great about it is the um, the terrific score by John Barry. He was the the wonderful composer of the James Bond films, Out of Africa, tons of stuff, Born Free. But um, but his score for the Black Hole is really lovely, and uh, I can recommend that highly. The Black Hole is kind of like an entertaining film in its odd way. Um, but definitely not um, a good film. <laughs> now, there are some other films. Um, uh, there was No Blade of Grass uh, based on the John Christopher sort of end of the world um, eco disaster uh, novel. There was When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth, which was kind of a very much Ray Harryhausen kind of dinosaur movie uh, starring Victoria Vetri, who had been Playmate of the Year. Uh, and uh, Glenn and Randa, which was another after the apocalypse kind of kind of story. Um, now, also certain directors who would also um, make their mark uh, had some films during this period too. Uh, George Romero had scored big with *Night of the Living Dead* in the um, in the '60s. He did *The Crazies* in uh, the '70s, he, and other films that would move into other decades as well. Uh, and uh, and also David Cronenberg did *Rabid* and *The Brood* in the '70s, and he again would be you know would would uh, sort of establish a very specific kind of body horror later on with movies like The Fly. And um, and then Ralph Bakshi, who'd done Fritz the Cat, did Wizards, uh, which was sort of a science fiction fantasy film, a highly influenced, though not credited to, Vaughn Baudet, who was a very noted um, cartoonist in National Lampoon and other places. And um, and there's also, in Disney did Escape from Witch Mountain and Return to Witch Mountain, which had science fictional elements. And, um, and then, then also, um, beyond that, you just you basically had um, uh, a number of other films that had little science fictional elements or little um, pseudo science fictional elements, you know, like Capricorn One, things like that. Um, but but the real flow of the decade was toward science fiction and fantasy films being the big money makers uh, for studios from then on, and uh, and that continues to this day. So, so that's sort of it for the seventies. Uh, I'm if I've left off one of your favorite movies, forgive me. <laughs> but uh, and, and Fantastic Planet. That's the one other one I have to mention. It was a, a foreign uh, animated science fiction film. Very very strange, but very visually um, distinctive. Um, but 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 it was a good, very good decade for science fiction. Many memorable, wonderful films. Lots to talk about lots to remember, and many of these films, the best ones, hold up extraordinarily well. Alien, in its new restoration, is it's great. There's, I mean, you can fault it here and there, but my God, what a what a brilliant film. And, and if you haven't seen this feature where you can uh, click through and look at all of Ridley Scott's storyboards that he himself drew, uh, that got the budget of that film doubled, um, you can compare it with the film ongoingly throughout, through the movie, and that's uh, really a treat. So that that's about it for now. Uh, we'll be moving on to sci-fi films in the 80s, 90s, and so forth. 
and then do television, the history of science fiction television, and also the history of science fiction in, uh, in comic books. So, and radio, not to mention radio. Uh, so that's about it for now. Uh, we're continuing forward with Space Command, with the Showrunners Network, with my book, Greenlighting Yourself. Uh, lots to share, lots to talk about, um, tons of wonderful things happening. And, um, and that's about it for now, guys. So if you want to uh, throw some money our way via Patreon or buy a Space Command share for 7500 bucks, really helps a lot to keep things moving. And, uh, you know, also check out the Space Command store where you can get great Space Command merchandise and T-shirts and leggings and all sorts of stuff. Um, that's all down there that you can click through. So thanks very much. And we will see you very, very soon. Take care, guys. <laughs>